One of the canonical related rates problems is draining a cylindrical cylinder or filling it. So let's take a look at this example. Draining a water heater. A water heater that has the shape of a right cylindrical tank with a radius of one foot and a height of four feet is being drained. How fast is the water draining out of the tank in cubic feet per minute if the water level is dropping at six inches per minute? Okay, well, let's take a look at our steps for solving related rate problems. So step one tells us to read and reread the problem to gain an intuitive understanding, right? So we essentially want to understand the problem deeply so we know what we're doing. Maybe we sketch a diagram. We also want to identify any rates that are given and the rate that is to be determined. So I like to think of this as givens and goals. Okay, so let's go back to our exercise here. Okay, so here we can draw a sketch. The mind likes to see things geometrically. It just somehow changes how we approach these problems. So always draw a picture. It's not just, you know, something teachers say or something like that. It really does help in solving these problems. Okay, so here's our cylinder. We have a radius of one foot here. So let's say one. Uh, what's happening? Well, we have water in this, or some some liquid. Oh, water heater. Okay, so it is water, and it's being drained. All right, so maybe we can put a little spout on here, and out comes the water. So this is going down. I'll call this, uh, maybe we can call this height. And we have dH dt. The height is changing as the volume goes out. Out it comes. We'll call this dV dt because the volume of water is coming out and it's coming out, it, it is changing, so we're gonna put a dVdt that kind of changes it from a static volume to a changing velocity of, of volume. And let's see, we have a radius of one foot. It's getting kind of busy there and a height of four feet. Four feet. Okay. Okay, now let's list our givens at least the important one, so given and goal. Because uh, it's really important to nail down what exactly we're trying to solve for here. So I'm looking at this and it's asking how fast is the water level, or how fast is the water draining out of the tank? So that tells me we are looking for dV dt. And in this case, it's not at a specific time because it turns out for a cylindrical cone, dVdt is constant. So in, in other cases, we'd say at some specific condition. But here, we're just solving for dVdt because it's, it's constant for a cylinder in this case. Okay, well, what's given? Well, dHdt is 6. But I just made an error. Right, this is a little bit tricky and mildly annoying, I'd even venture to say. This is in inches and everything else is in feet. So we should actually write this as one half foot per minute. So let's uh, let's do that. One half. So you do have to check on your units every now and then. So I'm putting that in terms of feet because everything else is in terms of feet. I don't know. Do you have a pretty good understanding of what's happening? I think I do. I can picture it. We have all our givens. We have our goal. We could. We don't need to put these other givens because those are those are kind of included in our in our picture. You can, but what we're really interested in is this rate that's given. Right? It's related rates after all. We're relating the various rates. Okay. Back to our steps. Step two says, write an equation that relates the various quantities of the exercise. If necessary, use geometry to eliminate a variable. Okay, so we're looking for a single equation that ties all the variables together. This is oftentimes an area or a volume equation. Okay, well, how about the volume of a cylinder to relate all these variables together? Really, we're relating volume and H. Those are the two variables of interest here. V equals pi R squared H. Yes, you should know that equation. I recommend memorizing it right now, along with that of the volume of a cone. 
Okay, and look what we've done. We've related our volume and our height. Okay, so good to go there. Back to our steps. Step three says to use the chain rule to differentiate both sides with respect to t. Okay, we'll use the chain rule. What does that mean? Well, it just says we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So essentially we're doing d by dt of both sides. Now, one very important thing here, note that the radius is constant. Okay, so that's a big deal because we don't have to do any super elegant geometry work to get the radius and height in terms of one variable because this isn't actually two variables. H is the only variable here and V. R is not a variable. R is a constant because the cylinder, the R does not change. It's one foot all the way through. You could even put in one foot right now if you wanted, but that's dangerous. At least that's a dangerous habit to get into. So I tend to wait on that and just put it in at the very end. Okay, well, the derivative of V with respect to T is dV dt. Okay, it's, it's not one because if we were taking dV dV, it would be one. But since it's dV dt, it's, well, dV dt equals, okay, pi r squared. Those are all constants and then we have dh dt. And look, our goal is in reach. Our goal was dv dt, and here we are indeed at dv dt. Okay, checking in with our steps again, we have substitute known values and solve for the desired quantity. Okay, we have a couple of known values to substitute for. r, which we know from our diagram is one, and then dh dt, which we know from our givens is one half. So let's substitute those in. This gives pi, let's leave it in terms of pi, r squared, so that's one squared times dHdt is one half. So how about pi over two? And then we should throw some units on here. And you can get the units from looking at this. We have dV, well, vo that's volume divided by time. So your unit should be volume per time. So feet cubed per minute, just to be consistent with the units we've been using throughout the exercise. Back to our steps. Our final step is to check that the answer is reasonable. Okay, well pi over two, that's a little over one, right? Because pi is three something. So three halves, I don't know, maybe 1.5 or somewhere in there. Um, is that at least in the ballpark of what we'd expect? If it's draining at half a foot per minute and we're just looking to make sure we're in the ballpark of what we'd expect right so i'd say yeah we're there the the water's level the water level's dropping at half a foot per minute water's coming out of this thing at about one and a half feet cubic feet per minute that's fine at least ballpark if we would have gotten 1200 cubic feet per minute that's where you want to go back and figure out what went wrong one interesting thing to note about this is that the height of the cylinder never came into play, right? We were given that it was draining at a constant rate, so we never had to use, this could have been 30 feet tall, and we would have gotten the exact same result here in this case. So um, with this constant rate, dHdt being constant, it doesn't matter how high the cylinder is.